Hey, g'day, I am Tim. Welcome to Happy Tized. Three tips to help you with your public speaking. Public speaking, why would you? It's most people's biggest fear. You might find yourself at a funeral, at a wedding, on a Zoom meeting. Everything's a Zoom meeting these days. Three tips to help you with your lot public speaking and they're gonna to come to you via me being vulnerable. I'll show you my journey as a public speaker, show you how not to do it. Three tips, let's not muck around, let's roll the intro. How was that? A lot of ums, wasn't there? Tip number one, know your content. Memorize, practice, practice, practice. If you know your content, then you can focus on the delivery. If you have to focus on the content, then you won't be able to focus on the delivery. Practice, practice, practice. Tip number one, and it's a big one. You were nervous and you stumbled and there, there, you know, feel good for you um, because you now know that you can get through that. Tip number two, if you know your content and you can focus on your delivery, have a think about what you do with your hands and your hands express yourself. Don't do this, don't do this, keep your elbows bent and wave them around and express as is appropriate with what you're speaking about. So I'm here to offer you an opportunity um, to... <clears throat> and wicking is where <clears throat> uh, you have a reservoir at the bottom of a pot. That, that is a huge statement considering that this is a multi-billion dollar industry. A, a B with a, a... a billion with a B, I should say. What's the thinking behind our belief that, that, uh, that we can take this opportunity as our own. Tip number three, just have a crack Barry. Sometimes you don't know how to get it right until you get it wrong. And sometimes to get it wrong, you just gotta get it wrong. And then you'll feel it and then you'll get it right. Have a crack. You now know that you can get through that. Unhealthy, broke, and sad ass. Not a great place to be. If I flip that, it's health, wealth, and happiness. My suspicion is we've all heard that phrase before. Who's heard that phrase or something like it? Pretty much all of us. There are two problems with this phrase, and the first one is that it tends to just wash over the top of our heads. Health, wealth, and happiness, they are the fundamentals of a good life. But for most of us, myself included, it's just too easy to be complacent. Health, it's not the most important thing in the world. Until you don't have it anymore, then it becomes the most important thing in the world. Wealth, it's not the most important thing in the world. But it's right up there with oxygen, because if you haven't got any, or you're lacking, it tends to affect every area of your life. Happiness. It's a state of mind and it's how you perceive the world. If you have health and you have wealth, it certainly helps happiness happen. But they're not the only ingredients in the recipe that will render reality to happiness. Problem number two. Health, wealth and happiness. It's a bit corny, it's a bit gooey, it's a bit uncool. And I say that with a perspective that comes from being a blue collar worker most of my life. I have worked with, associated with, and been friends with some of the world's finest scumbags. <laughs> and I was one of them. 
I was one of them. Health, wealth and happiness is not something that comes up in conversation with your scungy mates down at the pub. So for me, I conjure up a vision of a vegan sitting cross-legged on a mountain top going, oh my. <laughs> Now I've got nothing against vegans, more power to you. Solitude and meditation, I'm all for it. It's just all a bit corny, gooey and uncool. If we were to take a spiritual person, spiritual leader, a guru, let's go with a yogi. And this yogi was one with the cosmos. This yogi was a bloke by the name of Bruce. <laughs> hey, Bruce. Hello. Bruce knew the secrets to the universe, knew who he was, knew his place in the universe, was very close to enlightenment. Bruce the yogi knew the secrets to the meaning of life and everything. You're amazing, Bruce. <laughs> if we go to the other end of the scale, we've got Bruce. Did I say this was Barry or Bruce? This is Barry. <laughs> this is Bruce. <laughs> and Bruce is a party animal. You're a party animal, Bruce. Yeah, man. Bruce is self-indulgent. He cares mainly about himself um, and will appease his five senses at any opportunity that he can. He'll shag anyone he can. He'll drink as much alcohol as he can. He'll do whatever drugs that he can. He even eats. McDonald's every day. You're unreal, Bruce. Yeah, man. But I like Bruce. Bruce is a fellow human being, and Bruce is cool. Yeah, man. <laughs> are you like Bruce, or are you like Barry? Most of us are somewhere in between. In her book, Unclogging, Eve Bruneland makes mention of the fact that it's usually in our 40s or 50s, that time when we start to feel our mortality, that we start leaning to the Barry end of the spectrum. Now, we don't tell our scungy mates down at the pub that, but it's a truth. If you could be cool like Bruce and have the wisdom of Barry, would that be interesting for you? You'd like to know that knowledge? Then you need to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Happy Ties. And it's where I interview millionaires, billionaires, people that are homeless. So I'm on a quest to crack the secrets that are practical and doable for you and your lot in life. Now I know that I'm in a room full of high achievers here, so I invite you to have a conversation with me on camera, come talk to me afterwards, we'll have an interview, and we'll share some of your gem gems for renewal for the world, and we'll help the world get healthorized, wealthorized, and happy tized, and we'll have a fat time doing it. Thanks. <laughs>